Marie and I joined nine others on a photo journey to the lost city of the Inca in Peru, the floating islands in Cusco, and the Iguazu Falls in Brazil and Argentina. Our flight to the lost city took us over the majestic 23,000 foot Andes Mountains to the city of Cusco, a short drive to the lost city. The Inca Empire extended from southern Colombia to Chile and Argentina, a distance of 3,500 miles. Archaeologists believe that the Inca city was built in the Sacred Valley in the years of 1438 to 1452. We checked into our hotel and were reminded by our guide that we are at an altitude of 11,000 feet and that we should eat sparingly the first day and walk slowly as we go to the open markets to become little acclimated to the high altitude. The following morning, we drove to the base of the lost city. At the entrance is a rotary plaque commemorating the centennial scientific exploration of the city in 1911. We began a very difficult climb to reach the summit that overlooked the lost city watched by these llamas. We found that the llamas to be domesticated and docile. During our climb, we had to stop every four to five steps to rest and to catch our breaths. Three members of our group were administered oxygen periodically in the high altitudes. Ms. Yama decided to walk to lead us to the summit where we became spellbound by the incredible view of the lost city. The grounds are continually under repair because of earthquakes, severe summer and winter weather, and the million visitors every year. Mold is also an ongoing problem that can cause damage to the structure. This is addressed with a toothbrush, water, and a sharp point. These steps led us to the castle of the emperor whose views was of his estate in the sacred mountains. The walk down the steps was more difficult than the climb. The Incas were masters of plant domestication. They constructed an ingenious agriculture research center in the high Andes. This center is 492 feet high with a difference of 59 degrees from the top to the bottom. This helped determine at which level certain crops grew the most and best. From eight species of toxic tuber, the Inca developed over 2,000 distinct potatoes in 10 colors and 120 varieties of corn. 60% of the world's food crop was developed in the Andes. The Inca also invented the dehydration process. They would spread small sized potatoes on the ground, water them and let them freeze in mild weather overnight. The next morning they would trample them to squeeze the moisture out of potatoes as demonstrated by these ladies. They repeat the process twice and let them dry in the sun. They are stored in a dry place where they will last as long as 20 years. During our last night in Cusco, we attended the Ballet Folklorico performance. Our favorite dance was the bull fight.
early morning, we drove to see the great salt ponds. We stopped on the way to spend the morning at the large, busy Sunday marketplace named after Simon Bolivar, who liberated six Latin American countries from Spanish rule. The Sunday market finds the ladies dressed in their Sunday best and wearing hats that identify for which community they are. These are a few of the different varieties of potatoes and corn developed by the Inca. The open air marketplace is run by very resourceful women. This man was having difficulty selling his chicks. I paused here for a moment, then as I began to leave, saw this bag moving. A minute later, it crowed. <laughs> This is a self-proclaimed shaman who is telling the people that his medicine found in the roots will cure all illnesses. The roots may be taken as they are or soaked in water overnight. He prescribed that if they take the white medicine for 15 days, it will clean the blood, cure liver and kidney problems, heal surgery wounds, and stop hemorrhaging. The red root will prevent ulcers, stomach cancer, lower cholesterol, and reduce fat body cells. The shaman reminded me of the snake oil salesman in the old rerun Western Pioneer movies. He continued on to Modest and stopped in a small town to photograph a school and children willing to be late to have their photos taken. These children were having fun playing Ring Around the Rosies, All Fall Down. Maris is a town famous for its thousands of salt evaporation ponds located 10,000 feet above sea level. The Inca obtained salt by a process of evaporating salt water from a salty subterranean stream. Today, the total annual amount of production varies between 160 and 200 tons. We drove on to a neighboring town to see the Church of San Pedro. Construction began in 1682 and completed in 1685. We were not permitted to photograph the wedding that was taking place, but did photograph the happy couple when they left. The beautiful church is dedicated to the Virgin Mary, the patron saint of Latin America. We were escorted to the chamber below to see the remains of the bishops, priests, and the very wealthy families that built the church. The Pieta blesses the church. We drove along Lake Titicaca en route to the railroad station and stopped on the way for lunch. At the entrance of the restaurant was a traveling supermarket that services the community daily. We were permitted to take photos of the very clean and complete kitchen as a lady was preparing her lunch.
Following lunch, the owner demonstrated how he cultivates his soil. But the use of cattle is more common. From Cusco, we boarded a luxury train for a 10-hour ride to Puno, the capital city of the region that is 14,000 feet above sea level. As we passed into the city, we found that the open market has something for everyone. It is located on the shores of Lake Titicaca, the highest navigable lake in the world. We were bused to the lake, stopping to take photographs of this carved head of an Inca emperor and of Yamas. Marie said they're so cute she could hug one, which she did. Lake Titicaca is known for its floating islands that were developed by pre-Inca Euros as a protection from enemy. Currently there are 42 floating islands, although they are expected to disappear in the next generation or two. The islets are made of reeds that grow in the lake. The dense roots form a natural layer about three to four feet thick that supports the island. The islands last about 30 years while the boats last about 10. Here they are demonstrating how the islands are constructed. The two ladies had just arrived from a neighboring island to barter for desired goods. Several blocks of the reed are sawed off from the vast block at desired sizes and tied together with rope made of the reed. It is then anchored in the lake at a depth of about three meters. Many layers of reed are then placed on the rock until the floor is comfortable to sleep on. Reed houses and kitchens are built and secured to the block. The hosts are demonstrating how the islands are built to accommodate a family. The islands are built of bundled totora reeds that grow in water as deep as 20 meters. Once the demonstration was completed, the ladies began bartering for desired products. The visitors are offering a variety of nuts in exchange for dried fish and the hearts of the reed that are rich in nutrients and iodine. The ladies came to an amiable agreement. We made a donation to the families and boarded the boats to visit the school on the lake. School day begins at 9 in the morning and students return at 1 because of the possibility of unexpected storms. Students were excited to receive us, and after words of welcome by the teacher, they entertained us with songs. We gave our thanks and returned to Cusco for a two-hour flight to Tiguazú, Brazil, to see the Iguazú Falls that border Brazil and Argentina.
We checked in at the Hotel Cascades, that is a short two-minute walk to the waterfalls. We were told that the First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt was an honored guest at this hotel. The falls comprise of a spectacular display of 250 cascades. The lake is 1.7 miles long, 269 feet high, and twice as wide as Niagara Falls. A large portion of the water is thrust down a large powerful chasm called Devil's Throat. The thundering, surging power of the falls made Eleanor Roosevelt exclaim, Poor Niagara! Falls are so spectacular that they were used as backdrops for movies such as Happy Together, Mr. Magoo, Miami Vice, and Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. During the last morning of our journey, we returned to the falls and saw this large group of tourists board a motor launch to experience the thrill of challenging the surging power of the waterfalls by motoring as closely to the devil's throat as possible.